Hey guys, welcome back. How's it going? I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I did some thinking, and I believe the way I want to go about this is... Well, first off, we <laughs> we already unlocked pro proof this wasn't murder here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do this and see where it goes. Um, and I believe at the end of the last one... Sorry, it's been, it's been a little bit for me, so I'm, I'm recollecting my thoughts a bit. Uh, we also uh, found the antiviral medication, right? We now know where the second bottle of Excelivir is, or dose class? Is it a bottle? Is it a vial? I don't know. What, what's the difference between a... Like, what is the size difference between a bottle and a vial? When does a vial become a bottle? Anyway, but that's uh, that's back on this uh, this path over here, right? So I think what I want to do is I want to do as much as I can in one of these main three branches and then start moving back and forth between them. So I think I'm gonna finish, you know, I'm gonna see what's going on here. We're gonna, you know, knock out like the quick betray here to get the game over. Um, and then we'll go back over here and go as far down here as we can. And once we have completely locked ourselves out of this middle branch, then I think I'm gonna go back here, probably knock out a game over here, get to another lock. See what I mean? Um, that's, that's the idea is I kind of want to stick in like a single one of these three branches for as long as I can. So let's just just dive right into it. Let's let's prove this wasn't murder. Can't wait to see this one. Oh good God, she's dead. How could this happen? Uh, look, we can look. We can we can just we 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 all know, right? Like it literally just happened. Like come on. Ooh. Those infected by Radical Six eventually develop a powerful urge to commit suicide. Hmm. Suddenly, Clover moved. I leapt forward and clamped my hand around her wrist. What are you doing? Clover, listen to me. Alice wasn't killed. Nobody murdered her. She... She took her own life. Yo, good achievement name. I can't believe it's not murder. Strong, I like it. No, there's no way she'd do that. It's true. She stabbed herself in the heart with the scalpel. All right. Where'd she get the scalpel then? Well... Um, I did hear someone come into the infirmary right after the A-B game ended. Was that before I showed up? Yes. I got up to see who it was, but they were already gone. It could have been Alice. So she could have taken the scalpel then? Yes, I think so. You're lying! This is all a lie! It has to be! It's not. It's the truth. Then why did she do it? Why would Alice kill herself? She... probably didn't have a reason. W what? She'd been infected with Radical Six. That's what killed her. But you just said she killed herself. Just tell me the truth. Then prove I it. I am. No. Oh. <laughs> Your 10 seconds ran out a long time ago. So if you don't have any proof. I do. I have proof. There was a journal in the lab. Wasn't there, Kay? Show it to me. A uh, journal? It would have been in the safe. Oh. Huh. Well, Alice would have it then. Fi, can you... I don't feel like touching a dead woman's body. Could you take a look? Sure. Her hands barely shook as she quickly searched through Alice's clothing. It was only seconds before she stopped. Slowly and carefully, she drew something out. There it was. The journal. I turned to hand it to me, but I shook my head. You read it. It's in Latin. I can't make heads or tail of it. Heads or tails, excuse me. She cocked an eyebrow at me and flipped the small book open. When she looked back up at me, it was with both suspicion and surprise. Yeah, it is Latin. But translating this is impossible. It's full of words I've never heard before. I can barely understand any of this. Page 216. Huh? 
Turn to page 216. You should be able to read that one. Pai's frown deepened, but she did as I'd suggested. I watched her eyes quickly scan the page before looking up at me with renewed suspicion. Yeah, I can read this page. How did you know? No, wait. How did you even know there was a journal in the lab? This, I want to say, if I was an outsider and not Sigma, this would scream to me that you are either zero or working with him. Because this is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I know what's it like. Come on. I just knew. You just knew? Come on. Look, just read it, okay? Clover wants to hear what it has to say. Uh, right? Yeah. Right. Give me a moment to look it over. After a few moments of whispering to herself in Latin, Phi began to translate, paraphrasing the contents of the journal. Radical 6 reduces the processing speed of the brain by a factor of the root of 1 sixth. One of the symptoms of Radical 6 infection is overwhelming urge to commit suicide. Research has shown that it would probably respond to the right sort of antiviral medication, but no one has been able to develop one yet. Nearby towns are filled with the corpses of people who took their own lives. The uninfected have only barely managed to survive and have been sent to, into underground shelters supervised by the governments. Oh hey, Lord, we did it. please, let their future be a bright one. I shut the journal with a soft slap. Also, hold on. This journal allegedly is written during the Radical Six outbreak, which takes place, you know, in what, like 20, 2028, 20, 2029, roughly? Like, 20, late 2020s, early 2030s? We don't know the exact... I guess it... Do we? It's 2028, right? Do we know an exact date on it? Either way, not important. The important part of this is Latin's a fucking dead language right now in 2022. Who the hell's writing their research journal in Latin? What a fucking loser. Wait, why would you do that? Like... It, 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 <laughs> God for fucking bid anyone try and find it, and they're like, fuck, I don't know Latin. Guess this important information is gone. Useless to me. Why would you not write it in, you know, a common language at the time? Like, I'm, oh, this, this man or woman or whoever the fuck they are, they are dumb as a rock. A sickly silence drifted through the room. The newspaper article, the recording, the conversation with Ten Miyoji, and now this journal entry. There was no more hiding from the truth. The pandemic had already happened. <laughs> All of Clover's rage suddenly dissipated, and she collapsed to the floor, tears pouring down her face. None of us had the heart to say anything, and for several long moments, the only sound in the room was Clover's sobs. Um, we've got a problem. It's almost time for the primary doors to open. Yeah, only ten minutes left. Sorry, but I'll be taking Alice's bracelet. Fi and I won't be able to open the secondary door without it. So she was a magenta pair, just like me. Just now noticed that, did ya? As he spoke, Dio grabbed the bracelet off the floor and dropped it into his pocket. What color is your bracelet, Luna? I'm a cyan pear. You are part of Clover's pear, then. That means the two of you will need to come with me. I guess so. Come on now, Clover. We need to go. Alice would want you to survive, wouldn't she? You'll never be able to figure out why all this happened if you stay here. Clover... <laughs> Both games, Clover has just had, like, they, they put her in here with someone she really cares about just to fucking kill him. Like, this is kind of fucked up. Please. You're right. Alice, I promise I'll find out what happened to you. 
So technically in 999, Snake wasn't dead, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, as like game developers, not like in, you know, in story lore. Like the game devs were like, yeah, hey, last game, you know, like 80% of the game, if not more, Clover thinks her brother's dead and is, you know, real fucking bummed about it. What should we do if we want to add her in this one? Uh, let's like do it again, but not her brother, like a, like a friend, you know, like someone she really grew close to. <laughs> I'll figure out who Zero really is. I mean, if you'd never been locked up in here, you never would have, this never would have happened. So, so it's like Zero killed you. I mean, yeah, I, I would honestly, I wouldn't say it's like Zero killed her. I would say Zero killed her. Like there's not a like there. <laughs> any deaths that happen in any of these situations, I feel falls solely on the hands of the, the person orchestrating it. With, with some exceptions, right? Like, I guess, for example, in 999, when... <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my voice, my voice is still a little scratchy. When, like, Clover axe murders everyone, Clover's the killer, right? But something like this, yeah, Zero absolutely killed her. I... I promise. You can't, like, say, hey, I've locked a human being inside this room, they cannot escape. Now, uh, you know, oh my god, I, I'm going to, you know, the, the, this room also coincidentally happens to contain a, 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 a deadly wild animal. Oh my god, the wild animal, ki it's attacking the person, they died! The wild animal killed him, there's nothing I could have done. Like, it's ridiculous, right? Like, come on. I'll avenge you. Clover stood up and rubbed her hands roughly over her eyes, smearing tears across her cheeks. Then, with a determined frown, she strode out of the room. All right, we're out of time. Move, people. You guys head on down to the Floor B warehouse. We'll catch up with you later. <laughs> oh, right. Quark's got the yellow bracelet, which makes him your partner, right? Yeah, can't exactly leave him behind. Without him, we'd end up stuck in the AB room. Uh-huh. Okay, let's go. We'll see the rest of you once we've picked up Clark. Very well. Until we meet again. Was well, Quark gonna be awake now? What's gonna happen? Something's gonna happen. I don't I don't believe we're gonna go through the, the white chromatic doors yet. I don't know why, I just don't. It seems weird to me. I feel like the path we go through those doors is gonna be the last path. Cause the every other Quark. path is every other path has desperately tried to avoid them. You're awake. Yeah, I just woke up. Hey, where is everybody else? Oh god. Quark. Ted Miyoji's entire body shook with emotion as he drew closer to him. He cautiously laid a trembling hand on the boy's shoulder, almost as if he were afraid Quark would disappear in a puff of smoke the moment he was touched. When Quark proved to indeed be corporeal, Tenmyoji let out a cry and threw his arms around him. Oh. What's wrong? Are you okay, Grandpa? <laughs> That's nothing. Oh. Nothing's wrong. I'm. I'm fine. Quark gave him a puzzled look. Tenmyoji didn't even notice. His face was a mixture of happiness and relief, and I could see tears twinkling from the wrinkled corners of his eyes. All traces of his usual gruff stoicism had vanished. I didn't want to interrupt such a happy reunion, but we were running out of time. Still, Tenmyoji deserved a few minutes. I left them alone. At last, Tenmyoji seemed to recover, and shifted from an embrace to a protective arm around the shoulder. So, how are you feeling? Feeling? Well, okay, I guess. Was I sick or something? No, no. You're not sick. If you feel fine, then you're fine. Huh? <sighs> I'm sorry. I should never have gotten you involved in all this. Whoa, whoa, uh, skirt, hold on! 
wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, pulling the brakes, right? Because when he said, I'm sorry, I was literally just formulating the thought of why are you sorry? Like you, you're in this hostage, you didn't choose this, right? But did you? What do you mean by this, you Genmyoji, mm, my guy? Like, I, obviously I've known he's he's got a bit more to do with what he's letting on, right? He knows about this fake Mars bullshit in the Nevada Center and all that. What the fuck does this mean? <laughs> you got to Hold on. We need to have a nice long talk about this. We're going to run to the white chromatic doors. We're going to go through them. And I'm going to bring this up immediately before you even begin the escape room. Like, come on. What are you apologizing for? <sighs> Sorry. You're doing it again. Are you sure you're okay? Oh. So, where's everybody else? Mr. Sigma's here, but he's just been standing there looking kind of silly. I gave him a nervous smile and explained about the white doors. I got the feeling Tenmyoji didn't want Quark to know about Radical Six, so I avoided any mention of it. Alice's death was something I also left for later. Okay, that makes sense. That means I'm on a team with you guys, right? Right. So, um... These white doors, when are they going to open? Well, we've got about four minutes until the primary doors open. Oh, that's not good. We need to hurry. Come on. How do we get to the floor B warehouse? Okay, okay, we're going. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why. This is so cute to me. I love their dynamic. <laughs> Follow me. Tenmyoji's highly suspicious. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, man, this dude is real fucking suspicious. But he's also probably the most trustworthy person I've met yet. Arguably Phi. Phi did have that weird spat in that other timeline. Oh, you betrayed me. I told you you'd regret this, Sigma. Like, that was a weird bit. All right, but other than that, she's been pretty on the up and up. Tenmyoji, though, like... He's, he's been bringing back W's every single social interaction in my book. So where the fuck are these white doors gonna go? Hey, hello friend. <laughs> Grandpa, Mr. Sigma, where's Alice? Uh, don't, don't worry about it, Quark. <laughs> Chromatic doors have opened. Five minutes remain until chromatic doors close. You're late. Fuck off, the doors are- Fuck you, Dio, the doors are open and we're here. You can actually eat my ass. What the fuck's wrong with you? Where the hell have you been? Quark? You're awake. And fully recovered, apparently. I am also relieved to see you well again. Me too. Wait a minute. Uh-oh, 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 the kid's running the numbers. He's like, hold on a second. What are you talking about? I looked at the others from behind Quark and held a warning finger up to my lips. There were a few momentarily raised eyebrows and some nervous coughing as everyone suddenly fell quiet. Or silent, quiet. Look, the same damn thing. Huh? From Quark's perspective, it must have seemed especially odd. Uh, um, anyway, there isn't any time left. <laughs> we need to hurry. But there are three doors. Which team goes in which door? All of the doors are identical for this round. I believe it doesn't matter which team uses which door. Then we're taking the one in the middle. Why that one? You want a kill shot, you aim for the center. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow that, Dio. <laughs> You're more likely to just miss the extremities. That logic is flawed and more than slightly disturbing. It's true! <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really have a counter-argument, so center door it is. <laughs> I suppose we could go with the one on the left. Is that okay? I mean, we could go with the other one if you want. Kay and Clover only nodded. 
Well, there's only one left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten Miyoji Quark and Sigma. We get the right door because Sigma. I'm always right. Let's go. The door on the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any objections? All right, let's move. Thirty seconds remain until chromatic doors close. Hurry it up, Fi. This thing's gonna close. I know. You hear me out? What if I just like didn't and it's you time died, you? We as well. Right. Sure. No, oh, poor Clover. <laughs> Alice is a bitch, but she didn't deserve to die. Like, come on. Come on, guys. There's no time to waste. Right behind you. Let's go. Two, one, zero. Chromatic doors closing. Ooh, do we actually get to see what's beyond these? I very much assumed it was gonna be like, hmm, to be continued. But I guess there's no like, real reason for it to yet. Director's office. Interesting. <laughs> um, what? What? <laughs> oh, that was a balloon. What's this place? Probably the office of whoever it is that's running this place. It said director's office on the door. So this might be Zero Senior's office. Maybe, or maybe not. Well, w which is it? Why the hell would I know? We should look around. If this really is Zero Senior's room, there might be some clues. Yeah, you got a point. Let's get started then. Oh, we're, we're actually just doing it. Never mind then. Let's go. Put me in. I'm ready. All right. So what we got in here? Yo, I mean, like the balloons front and center. Like, come on. A balloon. You, you want it, Quark? I don't need a balloon. I'm not a kid. Really? How old are you? I'm 20. <laughs> what? No way. Gotcha. <laughs> oh, God. There's a balloon in the middle of the room. Fucking kids. All right. I'm. Oh, I didn't expect to pick this up. Is there anything on it anywhere? Doesn't look like it. Hey, globe. Doesn't it look kind of weird? I think somebody glued a piece of paper to it. I have no idea what to do for Quark's voice. I have no clue, we're struggling. Let's see if we can get it off then. Found a world map. Oh, I can view it in the file tab. Okay, I would like to look at the uh, world map, please. Oh God, here we go again with this fucking shit. Oh, purple to yellow, white to blue, red and green, easy. Figured it out, already got it. Puzzle solved. What's this? I checked it out earlier, but I think it's just a business card holder. A business card holder? Yeah, it's a file where you put business cards. They got all these weird shapes on the back. I think maybe if you line them up in a particular way, then you'll get some sort of hint. Place the business cards in the correct order. By clicking one business card and then another, you can swap their positions. Hmm, well, I guess we can give it a shot. Oh, God. Um. Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, Lord. Okay, so, like. What am I trying to make? What? Um. Okay, so I think. Which. Am I flipping? Yeah, okay, so, like, in theory, then. Yes, okay, so I think these are corners? They look like corners, kind of, well, but then these are corners, hold on. What the fuck am I doing here? I probably need something to tell me what I'm doing here. Hmm, I don't get it. Maybe you don't have enough information. Yeah, very reasonable. Oh, actually, hold on, there's, there's a computer here. Oh, well, what do we have here? I haven't seen a computer this old in a while. Something on the screen. Is that a lion eating a hamburger? 
I really don't think so. I think the lion's got two heads. Looks like a monster from Greek myth, Greek myth or something. And it looks like it's asking for an ID and password underneath the lion. Huh. That keyboard doesn't seem to be working, though. I guess we can't enter anything, then. Hmm. Hmm. Probably need a key to open this? Yep. Gah. It's not opening. Is it locked? Yeah, looks like it. I don't see anything that looks like a keyhole, though. What the fuck do you think this is, kid? What the hell do you think this is? <clears throat> There's this diamond-shaped hole in the middle, though. Do you think we're supposed to stick something in there? Yeah, probably. Hear me out? He's probably right. Do we look at the tower there? No. Just bust that bad boy open, take a, take the futuristic GTX 4090 in there. Oh, I did not expect that to just open. Ha <laughs> ha! Now this is Brandy. Fear Perrin's 200 year old reserve. You can tell that just by looking at it? I can smell it. That's some nose you've got there. Here, let me, just let me have a taste. I, I don't think so. How can you be so cruel? Oh, he just got his grandson back. Let him have a taste. Come on. Expensive brandy. Oh, -ho! this is the good stuff right here. Yeah, okay, look. Y you already told me that. Oh, did I? Yeah, 200 years is pretty impressive, though. Yes, yes it is. And then again, it's even older than that by now. Maybe it's gone bad. It's probably just like water now. I should drink. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> even the grandkids like stop fucking drinking, Grandpa. You freak. <laughs> the hell is it? Is a laser beam? The left section has a laser shining across it. Okay, give me that plate. Oh, we put the brandy in there. <laughs> I want to pick up the plate, but I had the brandy equipped. Easy puzzle. I totally intentional, I mean. <laughs> Absolutely. Huh. Well, putting the expensive brandy on the coaster didn't seem to do anything. The laser beam just went right through it. Hey, what the hell do you think you're doing? If you keep frying it with that laser, you're going to ruin the brandy. Pull it out of there right now. Okay. He's got a point. We don't want to ruin the brandy. That'd be ridiculous. What else we got in here? Um, yo, I want to check out the suit of armor. What the fuck? That's a slingshot. Okay. Slingshot. Not the most impressive weapon, but it's simple as hell and it won't jam like a gun. The short, sure, a short spear. I guess you could call this that. So he's got a spear instead of a sword? This is a really short spear, though. If you look at the tip head on, it kind of looks like a diamond. Diamond, huh? Hmm, I wonder what we do with that. A suit of armor. Well, it's not really a full suit of armor, is it? I mean, it, it's missing the helmet. So what, what would we call it? I'm not sure. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and call it a suit of armor, okay? Suit yourself. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, it's got some red paint on the neck and shoulder area. Are you sure it's paint? Could be blood. Hey, don't say stuff like that. Being in a room with a headless suit of armor is creepy enough. What the fuck is this? What? What is this? Is it one of those vacuuming robots you see on TV? You got me. Looks like a machine of some sort. Well, is, is it turned on? I don't, don't think so. Let's see if... Nope, no luck. Ah, nothing. Might as well give up. Yeah, let's look at something else. Maybe we, we can always come back to it later. 
All right. Right, oh kid. Oh, here we go. Hold on, give me that. Huh. This is cheap brandy. I'll call this bad. Shouldn't even exist. But I think it's best if I dispose of it safely with my. I'll be taking that. <laughs> Look, he tried. Zero's a senior must be a real tightwad if he's stocking this cheap stuff. Might as well be water. Is it really that bad? <laughs> well, I'll admit, I, I can't be sure. It's hard to really judge a brandy until you taste it. So, no! <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Dude, he goes in. I respect it. I respect the hustle. Bookshelf. There's some paint inside it. Oh, this is gonna be what tells me how to... I understand now. I see where we're going with this. That coaster's green. It looks like there used to be a bottle on it. Hear me out. What if we put the expensive brandy there? I tried putting the good brandy on the coaster, but... Nothing happened. Ooh, wait, wait, no, 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 it kind of it kind of lines up, right? It has some red paint on it. I think the red paint on this bottle has something to do with the red section on the wall. Maybe it's part of a letter. Mm, I, I can't tell from here. Maybe if we look at it from another angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck, dude? Man, the safe is really big. There's got to be, like, a hundred billion dollars in there. <laughs> You're such a kid. Maybe they're just hiding something they really don't want people to see. Like some... videos. I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Let's just open it up and find out. Uh, I, I don't think... See? Is it locked? Yeah. There's a circular panel on top of the handle. Looks like the one in the pressure exchange chamber's door. So if we just do the same thing we did then... Uh, yeah, 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 guide the line. I, 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 I've, I've done this before. Look, I'm, I'm an expert, okay? I know what I'm doing. Oh, small computer terminal. That's new. Interesting. World map. Okay, so purple to yellow, white to blue, red to green. Purple to yellow, white to blue, red to green. So, in theory, if we went like that, that would cut those off and that's impossible. So, we probably have to go like this. Hmm. White to blue has the least amount of options. Then, purple to yellow. Hold on. I don't think this works. Because then, like, to get red to green, it has to go through either this junction or this junction. Which the purple one has to go through this one. So... It's actually the easiest thing in the world. Just like that. It's honestly super simple. Good job! You did it! Mm, nice work. Very impressive. Let's have a look inside. A hundred billion dollars! Videos! <laughs> Jesus, Tenmyoji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's like all we got is a binder and a... A deer. So, a, a bind deer? Yo, Quark's get let's go! <laughs> what the hell is this? Is Zero just making fun of us? Alright, so there's a binder in the safe. I don't know why... Alright, Sigma's voice is mine now, I guess. <laughs> it's got two pieces of paper in it. Found page one in the business card. And yo, there we go! The business card instructions. The deer's looking at me, Grandpa. Fuck up. It's just a fake. Oh, we can just take it. Okay. Yeah, let's go put this somewhere. Hold on. Where do we, where do we gotta mount this deer? 
What if we put the deer head on the suit of armor? Hear me out. Ah, fuck. Headless suit of armor, red paint on the shoulder. Okay, all right, look, I tried. I gave it my best. Um, well, we got the business. What is this thing? Hold on. What is this? One of the training machines you see on late night infomercials? I think it's a facial recognition device. Oh, uh, what? You put your hands on either side and hold your face in front of that lens. Then it checks your face against whatever it's got in its database. Oh. Huh. How did you know that? I'm in the salvage business. Every so often, one of these babies shows up. It doesn't look like it's turned on. Yeah, nothing happens when I put my face in front of it. There's something to the right of that lens over there that looks an awful lot like a keyhole. We had a key for it. You think maybe we could turn it on? I assume so. Does this work? I wonder. No, okay. Let's go ahead and unlock the, the, the drawer here. Boom. Oh, we got the key, let's go. Ha, ah, it opened. There's something in here. Is it a key? Small key. Now we take that small key and we move back over here. Whoa, the light on the top turned on. It's like you managed to turn it on. All right, it's on. Now what? Well, why don't we give it a face to look at? One of ours? Yeah. Damn, none of our faces work. I bet I, I know a face that'll work. Face not recognized. Gender mismatch. What does it mean by gender mismatch? Maybe it's saying that it needs a girl? But there's only three of us and none of us are women. Well, maybe if we dress Quark up like a girl. No, no way! Why don't you dress up then? No, oh, just thinking about that is making me want to puke. Besides, do you see a wig or makeup or anything around here? How would any of us dress up like a woman anyway? Dude, you totally want to do it. <laughs> Look at this gas. Sigma, you're gaslighting a child. Come on. No, I don't. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe, what is it? Did you have an idea? Well, it can't hurt to try. Yeah, definitely worth a shot. How long has he had that in his pocket? It looked like a, it looks like a piece of paper. No, it's a picture. It's a picture of the dead lady who is his wife, Oh. Oh yeah, I remember looking at that in the infirmary. I guess it's worth a shot. Oh. Whoa! Yo, I was gonna put the deer head in front of that, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my gosh, it's like we're in the villain's secret lair. Huh, didn't think that would happen. Guess the recognition worked. I yeah. Yo, but hear me out, can we take that? This is a facial recognition device. Picture Tenmyoji had on him, had with him is in front of the lens. Okay, yeah, yeah. Give me the, give me the helmet. Look. Oh, hey, there's the helmet for the suit of armor. Now we go combine that with the suit of armor. We'll plop that bad boy on there, perfect. Yes, that suits him. Okay, now can I sit in this chair? You must be feeling pretty tired, Tenmyoji. All the excitement can't be easy for someone of your age. Why don't you sit down for a bit? Huh. Not so old, I need the likes of you worrying about me. And that's so? Well, I think I'll just have a seat then. <sighs> hey, whoa, there's a target on this balloon. Wait a minute. H L. Huh? What's that? You think maybe it's an eye watching us? 
Uh, I don't think so. I think it's a target. Like a bullseye? Yeah, you're supposed to shoot it. Well, I don't have anything to shoot. Well, I have I have the, the slingshot, but I don't have anything to shoot the, like, from the slingshot, right? Hold on, I did. I just noticed this. There's a screen built into this, into the credenza. I've never seen this word in my, word in my life. There's something on it. Starting up. Please wait. What is it starting? Beats me. Well, my money says that it just means it won't do squat if you mess with it right now. How about you go have a look at something else? Fair enough. Oh, sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, a little bit of cough. All right, all right. Now we've got the business card pages. Oh, God. Okay, so Bob, Chris, John, Tony, Ian, Michael. So, Bob... Oh, God, I already forgot. Chris, John. Chris, John. Chris, John, Tony, Ian, Michael. Was that right? Yeah, Tony, Ian, Michael. So, Ian, Tony, Michael. Okay. Now, the women are requesting the following positions. Carol likes being on the left. Anne prefers to be near Bob. Ella would like to be above Anne. Sophie likes to be on the very right. Kate likes to be next to Michael. So, Carol likes being on the left. Sophie likes being on the right. So, Carol likes being on the left. So, either here or here. Sophie likes being on the right. Either here or here. No, I, I, John, John can't move. So Sophie likes being there or there. Carol here or here. Sophie there or there. Um, Ellen would prefer to be above Anne. Anne prefers to be near Bob. So where's Bob? Bob is there. So Anne has to be. Anne has to be here, right? And Carol likes to be on the left. So this column is correct. Who wants to be above Anne? Ellen would like to be above Anne. The only way to do that would be to put Ellen there. Oh, eh, I, all the others are correct. Got it. Didn't even finish the puzzle. <laughs> well, I, I finished it, but I didn't, you know, you know what I mean. I, I think this is right. Then let's look at the other side. Maybe the shapes look like something now. That's with the drawer. No, I, I, I didn't mean to click. Old fat, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at, look at the back of the business cards. Um, book three, three, four. Okay. Oh God, get get this out of here. I don't want to look at that ever again. Hear me out. Uh, book three, three, four. It says book three, three, four. What does it mean? Well, a book is a bunch of pieces of paper that are bound together with... I, I know what a book is. Book 334. We got any books over here? Oh, we do. 33... Oh, 334. Wait, no. Hold on. Oh, God. Oh, no, no, no. I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand now. So, 3... Uh, three, four. Right? Wait, I don't think you need to move the books around anymore. Remember, the back of the business card said book three, three, four. So if that mean, meant to arrange the books in the order three, three, four. Oh, yeah, I guess I already did that. So what if we put the cheap brandy in the laser now? What if we throw that bad boy in there? Perfect. L look! The laser beam's bending all around inside the bottle. Yeah, it's made a parallelogram. Okay, well that that's that. Um Huh. I gotta put this friggin' deer head somewhere, dude. Like, where where am I gonna put the does it fit on this machine over here? No idea what that thing is. Might as well leave it alone for now. Fair enough. Can the knight hold it? Pain on the helmet and armor lines up. But I can't really tell what it is from this angle. 
it looks kind of warped. Where do I put this freaking deer head, dude? Like up there somewhere or something? H L. Now, now, now what? Hmm. There we go. I didn't realize I could click up there to look up there. There's red paint on the wall. It looks like there's an outlet right next to it. Why would somebody put an outlet this high up? Well, it's probably not an electrical outlet. What is it then? I think you're supposed to insert something into it. Like what? Maybe the deer? Yes, that's it. Remember how there are two pegs on the back of the mount? I'll bet they fit perfectly. Give it a try. Okay. Well, it looks like you were right. So, it'll say H-E-L, hell. Is it gonna say help? Is it just gonna say hell? Who knows? Oh, but I can't, I don't know what, what this could be any letter, truthfully. I, it could be anything, I don't know. I mean, can I just shoot the slingshot? Do I need ammo? Okay, yeah, I guess I don't need. Okay, I'll just use a slingshot to. Whoa, hold on there. You actually have something to fire? Oh, no, I, I guess I don't. What are you gonna shoot it with then? With mine bullets? It's called telekinesis, Sigma. Anyway, I figured that'd slip your mind, like everything else. Here. I grabbed this off the floor earlier. Take it. Oh, this is the key we use to start the facial recognition device. And see, I don't like these types where it's like, oh, you're just supposed to try it and fail and then someone else presents the thing. Cause I, I was gonna look around forever and just decided, well, maybe I don't need ammo, right? Like, that's annoying to me. Thanks, man. I guess I don't have to use my special psychic powers after all. Here goes. Aiming. Three, two, one, fire! Pew! Oh, nice aim. You got it right in the center. Okay, hell. We, we did it, we figured it out, it says hell. What is up with this though? Hold on. There's not really much else to interact with. Maybe, if I'm sitting down here, do I need to like, interact, look at this? Suit of armor complete with a helmet. With the helmet on, the paint in the armor looks like it has an L. A mounted deer. The paint on the deer and the paint on the wall fit together to make what looks like an E. A bookshelf. The paint on the bottom of the brandy matches with the paint on the back of the wall to make an H. H-E-L. Yeah, okay, we, we, we did it. Oh, there's a lever next to the chair. I didn't even realize this over here. There's a lever next to the chair. Why don't you try to pull it? What's, what's gonna happen? Come on, it's really that hard to figure out. You think it's gonna go back into the wall? Pull the damn thing and find out. All right, let's give it a try. Here I go. Boom, I wanted to see my, my, my POV spin. Come on, hell, who'd have thought? Looks like there's something on the table. Is that a battery? I, just, I don't know, what could it be? It could be anything. All right, it says help. I pull it and the chair should turn back around, all right? Ah, whatever. Not like I have a choice. Ha! Oh, desperate need of some hydration there. What is... I guess that's nothing over there. Oh, oh no, don't don't bring up the cursor. Thank you very much. I do not require that. I don't know, can I put the battery in this? Since it's still starting up, I probably can't do anything with it right now. Do I put the battery in this? No. Bro, where does this battery go? An old computer. Keyboard isn't working, might as well leave it alone for now. Where on, oh, oh, no, don't do that. Where do I put this battery, dude? We got a battery, oh, I combine it with the tablet. I forgot I had the tablet. Like, you got the tablet to turn on. Look, something showed up on the screen. 
Enter a four digit, oh, what could it be? It could be anything, really. Wow. You did it! Mm. Good work, Sigma. Take a look at the screen. Oh, let's go! We got the password, baby! Huh? What is this? Looks like the password for the safe. Awesome! Now we can open it! You found a safe password! Hey, but we're not done yet. Oh, look at this! Huh? It changed. That looks like a puzzle. It is. It's a silhouette puzzle called a tangram. Move or rotate the triangles and squares to get the shape you need. Pressing a uh, pressing rotate slash move button will allow you to switch between move and rotate mode. You can rotate a piece by dragging it while in rotation mode. Dragging while in movement mode will move the piece in question. Then check when you're done. I have no idea what this is. Let's give it a shot. Oh no, I need to make the... Oh god, okay, hold on. I want to be in rotate mode, so like... Oh, okay, I see. Well... Um, don't need that. Uh, hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, well, you see, what am I doing here? What am I trying to? What? I don't know what I'm doing here. This is too hard. I can feel my brain turning to mush. You can do it. But is it like this? Am I trying to make that? I don't. Hmm. Laser beam is making a parallelogram on the brandy bottle. I don't know. I mean, I just well like. Just in case, you, you, you never know when you're gonna need that. Don't don't judge me. All right, like you never know. Yeah, that, that's really doing numbers for me. That's helping out. Um, oh god, get that out. I don't want to look at that ever again either. So, what if we move... Uh, like, like get, get out of here. All of, The rest of you, go away. We just want you... Um... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I thought for sure that was correct. What am I trying to do with this? Like... Huh. I'm not sure what my goal is. Like, am I trying to... It's a square now. Am I trying to make this shape? Like... Is that what I'm trying to do? So in that case, I probably want, like... Probably want like a big triangle there, and then one rotated. Like this, right? Like that's the general shape we're going for. So... We just need to like fill out the rest of it, right? Then like something like this question mark. I don't think I'm doing this correctly, but who knows? You can't prove otherwise. You can't prove I'm doing it incorrectly yet. Ergo, it is correct. Um, this is not <laughs> this is not going uh swimmingly. But it could be going worse. It could always be going worse. Yeah, see, that's not gonna work with this last bad boy, huh? Like, like well then what do, what do I do with this dude? You know? You see what I mean? Unless... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Then we, like, spin you like, like that. No. Um, spin you like this. Right, right? Okay. A little bit, a little bit more. It doesn't need to be perfect, I imagine, but it makes it easier to visualize. Right, right, okay, okay. And then... Um... 
Get 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 the rest of these out of here. Okay. Um hmm. Hmm. Now I need like a slant here. What the fuck do I do with this shape, man? Like you're the real, real garbage piece here that's making this hard. What do I do with you? Hmm. Basically, I'm taking this square, right? And I'm like taking this side and I'm like pulling it and then I'm, I'm taking it by this corner and this corner, I'm just like stretching it, right? You see, you see what I mean? So like, in theory, what if we just like kind of stretch it, right? Like we don't we don't get too crazy with it. We just we just space it out a little bit, okay? Um we do a little rotation action. Hmm. This is not going as I had it planned in my head. Truth, truth be told, to no one's surprise. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I like what we've got there. Yeah, 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 this looks good, this looks good. I like that. And then like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're, we're, we're gaming? We're, we're getting there. And then like, something, something like that, right? And then like a little... Um, you don't, you don't quite fit this way, but like, hear me out, who's... What, what are you, what are you, like a cop? Like, come on. It's, uh, it's perfect. <laughs> so fucking awful. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what have you done, dude? Fawn, what the fuck are you doing? What are you even doing? Just take a step back and look at this. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at what the fuck you've done. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Per perfect. See, it's perfect. <laughs> Failure, how could I have failed? <laughs> this is impossible. <laughs> I had it perfectly. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, okay. So here's the thing, right? I need I've got like the straight up edge here. I need it to go not like that. So you you got to move, all right? I need you angled more. So like Hmm. I still think something like let me let me just get I want all these pieces out of here. They're clut they're cluttering my space here. All right, I want something like this triangle here, like that. Right, that makes a really good edge here. You see what I mean? So then we've got that whole line here, and then we've started on the top of it. So now, if we then. Try and get like the corners going. So then we want like a like a straight flat bottom here. Okay. What if we did like that, right? Okay. So now we've got boom, boom. And then we need to go all the way up to there and then across. Oh god, I'm about to sneeze. <coughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. That one snuck up on me. Ugh. Full on, they all sneak up on you. Yeah, look, okay, I don't play in sneezes, all right? Like, what do you want from me? I'm doing my best here. Then we take, look, you guys, you guys can come back now. Oh, look at that, look at this. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Bro, what do I do with you though? Like, you're the freaking, you're making this real weird guy, okay? Like, you're harsh on my vibe and I don't like it. What if you were a corner? 
get get everything out of here, all right? Get all out, get, get it all out, okay. What if you were a corner, though? Which corner could you be? Not really either. You could be like... What if we turn you like that, right? And then we put you... There-ish, okay? And then like this bit here goes there. You see what I mean? So then... Okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're talking. And then we we put like another triangle like there to fill that out. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like, I like this. So, now we need to go straight up. Hmm. Problem is I got like this big old boy here, right? Like what are you gonna do, my guy? What if we like go like that? And then Like come on, how how precise can this really need to be, right? Um I've realized I have a square here that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with the square. Um, we gotta fit that square in somewhere here. So like, what if we just kind of like jam you in somewhere? <laughs> Ooh, what if we just kind of like slot you in somewhere, huh? Right, right. Like, what if we just, like, throw you in, in somewhere? Hear me out. Uh, it's not gonna work. Um... Hmm. We put you... Fuck. Where do you go? What do you, what is it that you do here? You need to figure out what it is you do. Had all summer. I have no clue, dude. I do not have the, look, all right. This is for the file password anyway. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw in the towel here. We're gonna figure this out on our own time and I'll come back, all right? I'm gonna spend way too long playing around with shapes. Nobody wants to see this, okay? We're moving on. What can I do with this? Can I do anything with this thing yet? Keyboard doesn't seem to work. I, I guess not. I don't know. Whatever, I'm, I'm getting out. All right, I got the safe password. Safe, it's like before. There's gotta be a way to open it. Should we just punch in the password? Why don't you try it and find out? Oh, I hate when I have to give up, man. It feels so bad. Star, star, sun. Oh, come on. Star, star, sun. Completed. Good job. It opened. Hmm. Good work. All right, time to see what's in the safe. Hey, M Mr. Sigma? Oh, hey, Mr. Sigma? Why is he whispering? I know that stuff's important, but aren't you, you know, curious? About what? Grandpa's picture. Is it the one in front of the facial recognition thingy? Don't you want to take a look at it? But... Come on, hurry! Uh oh. Okay. So, who is this girl? Hey, stop! Bro. 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 You can't do this to me, all right? Like, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to do this to me. This is cruel. This is heinous. Um, I hate it. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, sorry, I just, I had to, I had to take a moment there. 
Um, I mean, that, that, look, that, that's June. Okay, like we we all we all know this June. Haha, this is a picture. It's from the the end of 999. It's June. Look, I'm not gonna bring up who the fuck took this picture. I thought this was just a moment they had because it was like Junpei got beat up, and she was like, "Haha, you're so funny, J Jumpy. When you when you fought off those mean bullies, you know, when they beat the shit out of you, right? No, who took this picture? Nobody. We're not worrying about that. Ten Miyoji, <laughs> my guy. Why why do you have this? Okay. I think. Oh my god, and that's why he trusted Clover. But that's why Clover doesn't remember. Then how come Clover isn't... Okay, look. We've already established it's not the year that, like, Sigma thinks it is. Okay, it's way in the future. The pandemic's already happened. Ten Miyoji clearly knows about all this. I think Ten Miyoji's Junpei. And I think that dead lady was June. Okay, that's the current theory in my brain. The pieces I'm trying to put together is how come Clover hasn't been aged? I'm guessing she was put in the cryogenic, like, freeze pod, and that's why. But, like, why? I, that's the only thing I don't know, is that why was she put in there, and she clearly doesn't remember it or want to talk about it or anything? No, but then that's the same with Sigma, right? So, like, Sigma, Alice, Junpei, a bunch of people were probably put in those pods. So some people were from before the pandemic, and some are after. Tenmyoji, who is Junpei. I am thoroughly convinced Tenmyoji is Junpei now. He is from after the pandemic. So he's one of the survivors. How did he survive the... Is he immune? Like, what? Hmm. I just... I... Hmm. Sorry, I tried to normally talk, talk out my thought process, but I literally just spent, like, a solid... Felt like an eternity there, just in like a blank state, trying to be like, what the fuck's happening? <laughs> She's just a girl. Is she your granddaughter? No. Well, who is she then? Ugh. Damn it. Fine, you've already seen her after all. Her name's Akane Kurashiki. I've been looking for her for... for a long time. Why? Because she's his first love. Oh, nailed it. God, I'm smart. Let's go. Oh, my brain is massive. Wait, wait, she's his first love. Ten Miyoshi and June didn't, dude, well, I can call you Junpei now. Junpei and June didn't work out. Holy shit, dude. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean they didn't work out, but the way he implies that is weird. No, you've got it wrong. But you carry that picture everywhere. I don't think I've ever seen you leave it somewhere. And when you don't think anybody's watching, you talk to it. I've seen you do it. Ugh. Huh. Didn't mark you for a hopeless romantic, Tenmyoji. Look, it's not about love, and I'm not a goddamn romantic. What is it about, then? Okay, okay. Don't want to talk about her. I, I get it. Okay, that's a can of worms. Um, it's a picture in front of the lens. Quark says it's a picture of Ten Miyoji's first love. I think the name was Kane Kurashiki. I can't tell I'd blame Ten Miyoji for falling for her back when he was younger. Or I can't say. I can't tell. What? The, what am I talking about? She's a cute kid. Jesus. Oh, we're moving on. Look, more will be explained. Oh, I have to put in the damn safe password again. Come on, dude. That's fucked up. All right, all right. Let's just get out of here. Hmm, it looks kind of empty this time. Only two things in here. First, we've got... The AB room key cards. Oh, these must be the star cards they were talking about. There are two of them. You guys take one and I'll take the other. Right. We're a pair, so we only need one for the two of us. And the other thing is... The key, as usual. Yes! Now we can get out of here! Great, no point in sitting around. Let's go. 
I agree. I want to figure out more of what the fuck's going on here, Junpei. Ten Miyoji, you fucking piece of... Mm. The door lock. It says lock right now. You guys ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go for it. All right. Three, two, one. You found it. Ooh. That room gave me way more questions than answers, my guy. So, Tenmyoji's Junpei. So it can't, yeah, yeah. So any any thought of this being June and Junpei doesn't make any damn sense. Cause Junpei's in the fucking thing, right? Like he's in the damn game. He's in the nonary game. And I'm pretty sure that dead lady was June, right? Otherwise no. he wouldn't have been so torn up about it. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Damn it. What's wrong? I left something in the director's office. What was it? The picture. Ugh. How could I forget it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I must have set it down after using the fake face recognition thing. Yeah, I'm going back. You two go on ahead to the warehouse. I want to come with you. <laughs> nah, that's fine. Me too. Why don't you head back to the warehouse, Sigma? The others are probably already waiting. <laughs> All right. I'll see you two later then. Right. Bye, Mr. Sigma. I watched them jog off toward the blue door. And then they were gone. Guess I should be getting back then. Hey, 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 have you guys any heard of a person named Akane Kurashiki? Clover goes, what the fuck? <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, that's where this is gonna boil up to, huh? I can see that one simmering, getting ready for it. <laughs> Junpei, you got old, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, that'd be super fucking funny. I'm so ready for it. Give it to me. Come on. I've earned this. Huh. Why did they put Junpei in here? Why is anyone in here? I stepped into the warehouse to find all the other teams already there. Kay and Luna. Bai and Clover. And Dio. The moment Dio spotted me, he dashed over to the rightmost AB room and slid his card through the reader. What a piece of garbage. An Ambidex gate has been opened. 45 minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. As he turned to look at me, I swore I saw a flash of a smug grin. There. Happy? This time I waited for you to get back before I opened it. You see? I can be considerate. Tenmyoji and Quark aren't here. Yeah, where are they? I guess they forgot something back in the room we found. They ran back to grab it real quick. And they'll be here in a few minutes. No big deal. While we waited, we exchanged information about the rooms we'd investigated. Unfortunately, none of it seemed very useful. None of us had found anything, and we were no closer to unraveling any of the increasing number of mysteries we were faced with. With that discussion exhausted, we sat down to wait. Before long, 20 minutes had passed since Dio opened the door, and Tenmyoji and Quark were nowhere in sight. Don't you think they're taking a little long? Yes, I'm getting worried. What if something happened to them? I'll go have a look. Then I shall accompany you. Nah, I'll be fine by myself. It's not that far away. Just don't look into the abyss too long, or you might become a monster. What? What? Clover, what does this have to do with anything? Like, yeah, that's a fucking Nietzsche quote. Well, it's a very, it's not, like, it's a very bad interpretation of it, but, well, it's, it's a butchering of it, but, like, come on. I think that's Nietzsche who says that, is it? 
If you stare too long into the abyss, the abyss stares back into you. That one? Fuck, what? Is that it? I don't... It, look, it doesn't matter. All right. That's... I, I don't... Uh, okay. Look, I'm just going to the director's office. I'll be right back. No big deal. All right. See you guys later. I gave a quick goodbye wave and stepped out of the warehouse. Oh, and back we go. I hope nothing bad happened to them, man. I like Tenmyoji and Quark. They're good people. They're they're good kids, those two. I like Junpei. <laughs> Junpei was great. <laughs> Come on, man. Now we've got old Junpei. I'm very nervous. I'm very afraid. Bro, why is he why are you why are you taking so long, man? Come on. Okay, they're just not here. That, it could be worse. Huh? That's odd. There's nobody here. The picture's gone, though. Tenmyoji and Quark must have been here, then. I laid out the floor B map. Hmm. I must have taken the door that faces the warehouse. After that, they probably went through the warehouse and out of the blue door to the elevator. Yeah, that's a much shorter route. On the other hand, I came through the red door, which is kind of the long way around. Huh. Looks like we managed to miss each other perfectly. Ugh. This was a huge waste of time. Shoot. Might as well head back, I suppose. I'd packed up the map and was heading toward the door when... Huh? There was a light on where there hadn't been a light before. What? Why is that thing on? We messed with it earlier, but nothing seemed to work. I felt a sudden wave of inexplicable, nauseating dread. The light stared at me. I swallowed and edged close cautiously toward it. The machine was in arm's reach now. I stretched my hand out toward it, slowly, slowly. Oh! So, you finally made it. Uh, hello? N no, y you're... I am zero. <laughs> what, how did... How could you tell? We've never seen this man before. I was the one who brought you here. You undoubtedly have as many questions for me as there are stars in the sky. As you can see, however, this is only a recording. I will therefore be unable to directly answer any questions. Ask if you wish, but I cannot respond. Ugh. I considered taking a swing at him, but decided that was spectacularly futile and kept my bald fist at my side. Now. Where to begin? There are many things I wish to tell you, but unfortunately, our time is limited. As such, the information I can provide is also limited. I have chosen two things of great importance to tell you. First, I will tell you about termites. Hmm, lovely, thank you. In retrospect, I suppose that's a rather odd thing to say. Are they what, are they... Are they the things that carried Radical Six? Question mark. I imagine you look rather bewildered right now. Perfectly understandable. The person who kidnapped you and threatened you with death is lecturing you about insects. I suspect it hardly seems fair. Nonetheless, this is very important. In a way, it will determine your fate. So I ask that you listen carefully. Have you ever seen a termite mound? They are splendid structures. Some might even call them works of art. Termites are natural architects, and their mounds are both structurally sound and make excellent use of space. So, are they following some sort of plan as they build? Are there termite blueprints detailing which room goes where? No, of course not. 
each termite is simply an oblivious cog in a tremendous machine programmed by millions of years of termite DNA. It is doubtful an individual termite has any idea what its contributions are helping to create. But a human does. We can appreciate the elegant forms of their alien cathedrals. We can see the simple beauty of their perfect functionality. We can understand the splendid planning of their structure. In other words, only an intelligence of a higher order can understand the beauty of what the termite builds. Now, consider humans. Why are we alive? Why do we love and give birth? Why do we create? From where do our cultures spring? Where are you going with this, my guy? There are many theories, but no one knows the truth. We are oblivious cogs in a tremendous machine programmed by millions of years of human DNA. Okay, fair enough. No doubt you see now what this analogy is supposed to illustrate. That we're all part of some higher power. Okay, whatever. Or like we're... I, 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 I don't know how to put it in words, but I, I get it, right? Yes, I mean to say yeah. humans are not different from termites. But what are we quote-unquote building in this analogy? We trudge through our lives with no greater understanding of our ultimate goal. You might say we don't understand what we're building. Only an intelligence of a higher order than ours can understand what we're doing. Imagine how we might look to such an intelligence. We may be building some structure so perfect and elegant, we can't even perceive it. Whatever it is, we've likely been building it on a dimension just above the ones <laughs> we know since time immemorial. O okay, uh-huh. If we are like the termites, then what we've created is almost certainly something of tremendous beauty. Zero, if if you are zero, I don't know if I believe that yet. Where where's your proof for any of this? Like, what other than the fact that oh well, termites do this, therefore humans must as well. Like, seems like a bit of a stretch, my guy. <laughs> seems like a little bit of a stretch, but I'll hear you out. And you are about catch a glimpse of it oh thank god or have you already is it the the morph of genetic fields well that's enough on that subject i think consider what i've said now let's move on to the second topic it is somewhat more immediately meaningful to your life and in fact the lives of several billion other people i realize this is rather sudden but I have a password for you. It is the password to disarm the bomb, numbered one. Ooh. Bomb? Are you ready? I will only say this once, so pay close attention. The password to disarm the number one bomb is BQZ RGJ DXR. B... BQZ RGJ. Oh, fuck. No, it needs to be in red. B Q Z R G J. I don't know if I'm actually going to need this. DXR. Fuck. I want it to be in red. D X R. That stays there forever. <laughs> Literally forever. BQZ RGJ DXR. BQZ RGJ DXR. BQZ RGJ DXR. Perfect. I had no idea what he was talking about. What bomb? Was he saying there was a, there were bombs too? If he'd guessed in my future confusion, he showed no sign of it. That is the last of the information this message was meant to convey. And this is a whole trap to test the morphogenetic fields because you can't get all the bomb codes in one time. Like, you gotta, ch like, fucking, come on. Before I go, however, I have a warning. You cannot tell any of your companions what you heard or saw here. If you do, you will be penalized. Immediately. I hope we will meet again someday. We would have much.
much to discuss. Wait! God damn it, you can't just spout all that crap and disappear. I found myself yelling at empty air. The hologram had disappeared. Ugh. What kind of idiot does he take me for? Termites? Other dimensions? How could that have anything to do with kidnapping us? Shit! I kicked out at a nearby shelf. Ten minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. All players, please enter your votes. If no vote is recorded before the deadline has passed, any non-voting parties will automatically ally. Ah, oh, crap. I need to get back. Not like there's any point staying here. <coughs> I spun around and ran out of the room toward the warehouse. Grandpa! Look, Mr. Sigma's back! <laughs> Took you long enough. <sighs> Where are the others? In the AB rooms. They went in already? Yep. Why didn't you two? Have you been waiting for me? Yeah! Grandpa said there was something he had to tell you before we voted, no matter what. Nothing that significant. Oh? Just wanted to tell you we're going to choose Ally this round. That's it. And you had to tell me no matter what? Seems kind of pointless. I mean, words are cheap. You can promise whatever you want. True, but we've got something to back it up. Just hear me out. Okay, go ahead. Quark and I both have 8 BP. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they pick. Like, if they betray, they're going to be above 9. Or if they ally, they're going to be above 9. He makes a ton of sense here. We're already on the home stretch. So what do we need to get to the magic number? Well, we need you to choose ally. If you do that, it doesn't really matter to us what we pick. You'd get to 9 whether you got 2 or 3 points. Exactly. That being the case, we don't have any reason to betray you. And if we both choose ally, we both gain points. True, but you must have considered that I'll choose betray. That would mean you choose betray to protect, your, to protect yourselves. But that's why we're telling you we won't choose betray. Mm-hmm. Can I trust you? Of course. All right, tell me one thing. Let's say we do this in both ally. Everybody gets two points. That means you and Quark will have enough to leave, which is great for you. But I'll be stuck with a measly five. How do I know you aren't gonna just open the number nine door and leave us in the lurch? I can guarantee it. How? I can give you my word. I will not open the number nine door, even if I have enough points to do so. I swear it. We aren't going to abandon everybody else just so we can escape. I trust him. I, Tenmi OG, he's shown on the up and up. I believe him. I swear too. I promise. <sighs> Man. So all you've got is a promise, huh? When I make a promise, I keep it. Trust me. Please. You've got to trust us. All right. Fine. I'll trust you. Two minutes remain until Ambidex game polling closes. We're counting on you, Sigma. You gotta choose Ally. You promised! With that, they turned and ran into an AB room, second for into the AB room, second from the right. Well, I guess I should get moving.
Start. Gee, what should I pick? I don't know. What if I betrayed them, though? <laughs> Get fucked, One jumpy idiots. Until Ambidex game polling closes. I had a decision to make. Should I trust Quark and Tenmyochi? Well, I could believe they were telling the truth and still betray them. That would bring my BP to six. Be that much closer to nine. And choosing Betray would guarantee that they wouldn't try and escape without the rest of us. Betrayal seemed like the safe bet. I... Please! You've got to trust us! You've got to choose Ally! You promised! Tenmyoji I could betray easily enough, but Bark? What the hell was I going to do? Ten no, I could betray... Remain. Until Ambidex game polling closes. I could betray Quark a thousand times more easily than betraying Tenmyoji. He's a homeboy. Quark is a kid. He's a dumbass little kid. Who cares? What's he gonna do about it? Nine, eight, seven. Tenmyoji's my homie six, though. Five, four, three, two, one. It's never a question. It's never a question. It's not even not even up for debate. Round three of the Ambidex game has been completed. Results will be displayed in the warehouse. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex gates now opening. Results from round three of the Ambidex game will now be displayed. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Do you know how fucking hilarious it would be if Quark and Tenmyoji betray me here? That would actually be hilarious. You would never, right? Come on, Jumpy, don't do this to me. Yeah, that fair. They were against Dio. Oh, Luna and Clover. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I've been played. <laughs> Luna and Clover betrayed K. What did K do though? Clover, Clover convinced Luna. Luna, Luna goes with anything. Fucking anyone else says. Let's be real. This makes total sense. Alice and Phi absolutely betrayed Dio. Dio's a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> Tenbyoji and Quark, why? I thought we were homies. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. Hey! What the hell, guys? Why'd you betray me? Quark had nothing to do with this. What? I made the vote. Grandpa. All right, fine. Why'd you break your promise, Tenmyoji? I only promised you one thing. We wouldn't open the number nine door, even if we got nine points. What? So you're not going to leave? Not what I said. Of course we're going to leave. What? Look, see Clover over there? What? Don't tell me. Yep. There they go. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Actually incredible. But why, Tenmyochi? We were homies. Jeez. That bitch. Wait. Quark and Tenmyoji have... The words were barely out of her mouth when Tenmyoji and Quark ran past. No! God damn it! You son of a bitch, Tenmyoji. Are, are you really going to leave? Well, yeah. Why else would I open the door? <laughs> True. But why? I'm going to go call the others so we can capture Zero Senior. Tenmyoji, 
Are you and Quark going too? Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, everybody. So, Sigma. What? Happy? I kept my promise. Clover opened the door, not me. Like hell, I'm happy. That's some shady shit, Tenmyoji. You say so. <laughs> I have to get out of here, and that's that. <laughs> he's got to pay for what he's done. Oh, shit! Hmm? Zero. You mean you know who Zero Senior is? Yeah. No point keeping it a secret now, I suppose. Ooh! I know exactly who Zero Senior is. What? Who is it? Tell me! You you are legally obligated to tell me, Tenmyoji. The number nine door has been opened. It will remain open for nine seconds. Let's go! Come on, guys! Time to move! Right. Oh, wait! This is for you, Mr. Sigma! Quark held something out. I looked down to see two pieces of folded paper. What is this? It's a letter. I wrote it in the director's office before the AB game. I wanted to tell you what kind of guy Grandpa is. So, read it, okay? He pressed it into my, pressed it into my hand. See you later, Mr. Sigma. Then he turned and ran toward the door, Ten Miyoji and Clover following in his footsteps. I was so surprised by the letter that I didn't even try to stop them. Before I could think of anything to say... See you. Goodbye. I got got. I got got. Fair enough. Fair enough, old man. Fair enough, jumpy. This... This fucking game. The number nine door has closed. This fucking game just continues to compound my trust issues with people. All right, like this is why I never trust anyone ever. Uh, Cause I'm gonna think back, I'm gonna be in some situation that is insanely tangentially related to something that happened in this game. And I'm gonna be like, well, I trusted Tenmyoji for an entire playthrough and then he betrayed me at the end. So therefore you, I can't trust you. You see what I mean? Like this is how I end up being Dio. All right, this is my Dio transformation arc where I turn into a piece of shit because of stuff like this. This ends the Nonary game. Thank you for your participation. As the game is over, all doors other than the number nine door have been unlocked. Escape is not possible. Please enjoy your stay. Read the papers. The papers, though. Shit. They're gone. All we can do now is hope they bring help back. Indeed. I agree. I looked down at Quark's letter and slowly unfolded it. His handwriting was still slightly uneven, but he'd filled both pages with writing. I began to read. It was a really stormy day when he found me. He said the rain was coming down so hard it almost hurt, but somehow he managed to hear a baby crying. I guess I must have been crying pretty loud. He took me home and did his best to raise me, but he'd never been married or had a kid before, so I think it was really hard for him. He couldn't figure out how to mix the formula, so he was always carrying the directions around with him. Also, I guess I was a pretty picky eater, so if he didn't get the water to formula ratio just right, I wouldn't eat it. I guess I was kind of a pain, huh? But he didn't give up, and now here I am. When he found me, I was really, really small, and he was worried that I might not make it. That's why he named me Quark. A Quark is a really, really small thing, and I was really, really small too. Grandpa didn't need to worry though, because it turned out that I was pretty tough. When I was one, he forgot I was sleeping in the bed of his truck and drove off. I rolled out and went off the back, but I didn't even get scratched. I started walking when I was two, and when he wasn't looking, I fell down the stairs. I didn't get hurt then either. 
When I was three, I got really sick. I had a super high fever for a week, but eventually I got better. I guess you could say I'm pretty lucky. Anyway, I didn't really have any more accidents after that, and I was a pretty healthy kid. By the time I was six, I'd started helping Grandpa out with his work. His job was to gather junk from abandoned buildings. Then he'd fix it up or pull out the useful parts and sell them. There were plenty of abandoned buildings, but finding good stuff in them was hard. You had to know which parts were useful or you could end up wasting a bunch of time. Every time I'd find something, he'd explain to me what it was, how it was supposed to work, how to fix it, all sorts of things. Usually, though, I just wanted to finish up work so I could go to the theater. The theater came to our town once a week in a wagon. They'd show old news or movies. I went every single week, but Grandpa only went once in a while, and he'd go only he'd only go weeks when they showed movies. Oh yeah, I didn't know that I'd been adopted until I was seven. One of the other kids on my block told me. I guess after Grandpa found me, he looked all over town to try and find somebody who'd take me. The kid from my block actually had a mom, and he'd asked if her if she would take me too. I gotta admit, I was pretty shocked when I heard that. There weren't a lot of kids with parents around, so hearing that someone lived with his actual mom was pretty impressive. I was also kind of surprised that Grandpa had tried to get someone else to take me. Did that mean he didn't want me? The kid who told me about Grandpa trying to get rid of me was a real jerk. He was totally spoiled, and he'd bragged to everybody about how he had a mom. He liked to come up to me while I was working and say stuff like, Must be hard not having a mother. It never bothered me before, but after I found out that Grandpa had adopted me, I started to think that maybe he didn't really want me. If I could work on my own, then he- If I could work on my own, then he could get rid of me. I was scared to know the truth, so I never asked him. Then, one day, he took me into a bar in our neighborhood. During the day, of course. He went there sometimes to drink scotch, but I'd never gone before. When we got in, he just walked up to the counter with that grumpy look he has, and I thought, oh no, he's gonna make me work here. But I was wrong. I saw him pass something to the bartender, then he, and then he picked me up and sat me down on a stool next to the counter. The stool was pretty high, especially for a seven-year-old kid, and my legs just dangled off of it. It seemed really, really high to me, and I was pretty nervous. Eventually, the bartender came back over with a glass of scotch and another big glass full of something else. What's the root beer float? As I looked closer, I realized that the second glass was full of some sort of brown liquid with a scoop of ice cream in it. It took me a minute to realize what it was. A root beer float! I'd never seen one before, I was so surprised! Root beer was even more expensive than the nicest alcohol in the bar. To me and the other kids, it seemed more like an urban legend than a real drink. But there it was, right in front of me. I stared at the float, I still wasn't sure it was real at that point, and turned to look at Grandpa. He looked back at me. I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the bartender. He'd already turned around and moved off though, so I figured he must have put the glass down in front of me on purpose. It still didn't seem like it could be real, and I was just staring at it when Grandpa told me to hurry up and drink it before the ice cream melted. His gruff voice sounded like an angel's. Is this really mine? He nodded. Words can't describe how awesome it was. I'd never tasted anything like root beer before. The creamy sweetness of the ice cream made my entire head feel light. I felt like the luckiest boy in the world. That's not an exaggeration, I really thought that. The root beer float was delicious, but what made me even happier was Grandpa. When I looked over at him, he was smiling. I know that's gotta be hard for you to imagine, but he really was. Right then, I didn't care whether or not he'd found me and adopted me or not. He'd bought me a root beer float. That made me way luckier than some kid who had a mother but had never tasted a root beer. Of course, after we left the bar, he was the first kid I bragged to. 
So Grandpa and I were doing pretty good. Until the fight. I was in a super bad mood that day. I'd torn one of my shoes that morning and some old drunk guy had yelled at me. All the junk I found was totally useless. The day was almost over and I was fed up, so I just grabbed some random trash and took it back to the house. When I showed what I'd found to Grandpa, he frowned. He started going through each thing I'd brought back, explaining why they were all useless. I got really mad and just yelled, I don't care! Then he got mad and I couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I was pretty upset and I started thinking that maybe Grandpa had only adopted me so he could raise me to work and make money for him. After a while, I went and hid in an abandoned building, but by then I'd started to calm down and think that maybe I should go back and apologize. It had started raining pretty hard though, so I decided I should wait for it to stop. But that was just an excuse. The truth was that I was nervous. Part of me knew I'd done something wrong, but I didn't want to admit it. The rain didn't stop though, so I just sat there staring out at the gloomy gray sky. I imagined Grandpa coming to get me. Hmm. Sorry, this is a little long. I need a little hydration. Give me a sec. It kept raining all night, and he never showed up. I gave up waiting and decided it was time to go home. I was about halfway there when I heard somebody groaning. At first, I thought I should just ignore it and not get involved, but I went over anyway and... It was Grandpa. He was totally soaked, and I could tell right away that he'd been there for a really long time. I yelled and he opened his eyes a little bit. He smiled weakly and said he was glad I was safe. He'd spent all night out in the rain looking for me. I felt awful. Grandpa had been out in the rain looking for me so long that he'd collapsed. I was horrible. He'd heard me crying in the rain, but I hadn't heard him. As I ran to get the doctor, I promised whatever god might be listening that if they would only save Grandpa, I'd never ask for another root beer float ever again. He got a real bad fever, and his temperature wouldn't go down for days. The doctor said that if it kept up, he'd die. If he died, then I'd be all alone. There wouldn't be anybody left to care about me. The thought of that happening terrified me. Fortunately, I must have passed some of my luck onto Grandpa, because a week later his fever finally broke. I was glad he wasn't going to die, but I was also a little scared. What if he had decided what if he had decided he didn't want a stupid kid like me around anymore? My plan was to apologize as soon as he woke up, but when the moment came, my brain just stopped. Grandpa started to talk, and it took me a minute to realize he was apologizing. I didn't know what to think. He explained that he was an old man, and that he meant he was probably going to die sooner rather than later. He was strict with me because he wanted to make sure I'd be able to make it on my own after he was gone, but maybe he'd been a little too strict. All the things I'd worried about had been stupid and selfish. Grandpa cared about me a whole lot. He even worried when I'd ran off, and he'd gone out into the rain to look for me. I tried to apologize, but when I opened my mouth, I just started crying. I don't think I've cried that much since I was a baby. But he just smiled and patted my head. I asked him if he'd ever regretted adopting me. His eyes got all wide and he said, of course not. I'm actually tearing up a little bit. Jesus. Woo! Woo! Give me a sec here. Okay. This is hard, dude. God damn. Okay. Woo! He told me that, that he was looking for a really important lady. And because of that, he'd had to give up on a pretty much everything else in his life. But when he took me in and started raising me, he felt like he'd gotten some of what he lost back. That was when I decided I'd stay with him forever. Even if he said I couldn't. Oh. Is that... 
what are we what what what, what, what are we doing here? Oh, we get actual credits! That's an ending! Oh well I, I don't I don't wanna watch these yet. Hold on. No, I I can't, I can't, I don't think I can skip these. Well, I mean, I, you know, the, we, we got a lot more paths to go through, guys. There might be spoilers in these credits. Hold on, like, what if there are spoilers, though? Okay, good, I don't think so. Localization staff, never mind. <laughs> um, well, that that's, that's the Tenmi Oji ending? Quark ending? S something? We're 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 in the long haul now, I guess. We're 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 stuck with these credits. <laughs> wow, so um interesting. So after 999, Jun something happened with Junpei and Quark. <laughs> Quark, Jesus Christ. With Junpei and and and, uh, and June. Junpei lost June, like couldn't find where she went. I assume because Clover said that Santa and June went into like hiding, right? after the, the Nonary game. So I guess Junpei was looking for June and he couldn't find her. The pandemic broke out and clearly just annihilated society, right? So from there, Junpei spends all his time looking for June, can't find her. You know, he's in this like post-apocalyptic society borderline. He finds Quark and he raises Quark. There's so many, I don't know, there's so many questions though. Like, like why did they separate? What was this Mars mission? How did how did Junpei know about it? Because he said he was a part of it. Oh, I bet that's why June was lost. June might've been part of the fake Mars mission. Maybe that's how they got separated? I don't know. Interesting. Because the, the Mars mission, the, I'm just going to call it the Mars mission. They're not really on Mars. But that's what brought out Radical 6. Huh. I just, I don't think I have enough to piece everything fully together. But we're getting there, right? We're getting the web started, all right? We're getting, we've got some strands. We've got, we've got some on our, on our, on our friggin' cork board. We've got some lines drawn, all right? But... We don't have the whole thing yet. Tenmi OG end in root beer. Oh, wait, what is this in root beer veritas? I don't, I don't know that one. Oh, Tenmi OG, my boy. Oh, he's got his little portrait there. Look at him. Look at him. So that's the Tenmi OG end. Well, you all know what's gonna happen, all right? Like we, we all know how this is gonna go. We gotta betray him. And then we gotta betray him again over here. Oh, uh, this isn't Tenmyoji. This is someone else, right? No, no, no. This is us and Clover with Tenmyoji. Question mark? I don't remember. Anyway, we gotta finish out this this path now. Uh, see see this here. What's the lock here? Oh, this is how do we survive? That's right. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. This is where we're ending the episode. Uh, as always, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the Steam Store page. You can pick up the game for yourself and check it out and see some of these other endings before me and uh, watch me literally almost cry while reading a letter from a child, a fake fictional child about a fake fictional grandpa. All right, like that's a real thing that just happened. Uh, I, I can't get over it. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's out there forever now. But yeah, if you've made it this far, uh, I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day or your night or whatever time it is for you. And I will see you again next time. Goodbye.